All right, all right. What's going on, everyone? It's your boy, Rome, calling in from the city of Houston. All right, guys, so we're going to get right all into right, it. Right. We're going to get right in. So, you know, it's live, unscripted, so. <laughs> oh, my God. You never know what's going to happen, you know. Anyway, guys, so this live is basically about the actions that I created over the last couple of weeks. So what I have here for you guys is a number of actions, um, some for frequency separation, as well as uh, some dodging and burning. And I also threw in a action for teeth whitening, which is this one right here. And along with this download folder, when you download these from the link that's down below, you'll also get this folder, which has a couple of photos in it that you guys can um, practice on just to see um, if you become you know, proficient at doing this as well. I don't think you're going to have any problems with it. It's relatively simple. Okay, so let's get right to it. So let's go over and open Photoshop. And basically what I want to show you guys is, you know, easily enough, <clears throat> you could set these actions up yourself. Simply enough, you can just download them, install them into your Photoshop, and you'll be able to, you know, run them from uh, your action panel. So once you install them, you'll have a couple of actions here. You'll have frequency separation for 8-bit, 16-bit. You have your dodge and burn, and then you'll have your eye whitening and teeth whitening action, which is basically the same action, but you could use it for either or. So let's just open an image here real quick, something you guys might like. So let's start with this guy. And as you can see here, he's in need of a little, uh, you know, dental work maybe. But we're going to fix that up real quick here in Photoshop. Let me adjust the exposure just a touch. Bring our contrast up. <clears throat> and let's just go ahead and open this. Okay, so once this opens, the only thing you need to do, you don't even have to create a second um, layer, but I'm assuming, you know, once you get to this teeth whitening and eye whitening stage, you've already done your frequency separation, you've already done or done your dodging and burning, and now you're working on your final things that you want to do to, you know, uh, enhance your image even further. So let's go ahead and duplicate this layer just so we have a Command J on the Mac. And then we're going to zoom in and take a look here at this guy's chompers, okay? So we're just going to go right up here where it says Eye Whitening by Rome and just click on that. It's going to pop up with a little instruction um, um, action to show you exactly what's going on, just some basic instructions as to, you know, brush settings and all that kind of stuff. Just click on Continue. And then it's going to create your folder. So then from there, you can go in and you can basically see what I did. You know, so I have, uh, let's pull this out a little bit so you guys can see. So I have a uh, color filter, which is just a photo filter. I have a hue and saturation filter. And then I have a brightness and contrast that I set up for this. And then I just put them all in a folder and created a uh, mask on top of that and inverted the mask. So that's what we have here. So when you're here, you're going to just click on this black mask because this folder will be closed. And, you know, make sure your foreground color is set to white. Your brush is a soft round brush, which I believe is preset. So let's take a look at that just to be sure. Yes, soft round brush. And the hardness is at zero, and then you can adjust the size as needed. So I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to grab my pencil. And we're just going to start... Cleaning up this guy's teeth here real quick. So we can just go in and just start brushing away some of this tartar. And as you see here, it takes it away relatively easily. And I'm not even trying to be careful here, guys. I'm just going in, you know, with the Wacom pen. And I'm just, you know, dabbing different areas. And I'm just painting away the tartar in this specific case. Let's go down here to the bottom teeth. Same thing. And just draw it in and you'll see it'll just 
magically disappear. Now, teeth are not completely white, as we all know. So there's gonna be some variation of color in teeth, just like there are in eyes. So I've made sure to try and keep that as um, soft as possible. Now you can go back over this as many times as you like and you know just kind of uh, enhance the whiteness if that's what your goal is. But if we look at the before and after, you know, this is before and that's after. Before and after. So simply enough, you know, that shows you exactly, you know, how well this works. And like I said, I didn't want to overdo it. And I've seen some actions. Um, when we get to some of the eyes, I'll show you exactly what I mean. I've downloaded actions before that other people have created. And one of the problems that I had with the actions was it just seemed like they were just way too strong for what it is that um, they were supposed to be, you know, doing. So let's open this image here. Now this image has somewhat of a um, color cast to it, as you can see, you know, because it's outdoors. Uh, it may have been shot, you know, in a picture profile or something like that. But you can also see some color discoloration in her teeth. Um, you know, you can't see her eyes at all. So we're just going to focus on the teeth. So we're just going to go ahead and open this image. And we're going to zoom in here real quick. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate our layer, Command J. And we're just going to run our action, and then we're just going to clean these teeth up really quick here. So we're going to run our action. Again, you know, your layer is already selected. Your foreground color white is already selected, and so is your soft round brush. So we're just going to go in here and just start cleaning up her teeth. Really, really simply. Just going to brush right over. And then I'm going to show you the comparison between the two. So we're going to zoom in here real quick. I don't know how well this is going to show up on, uh, you know, YouTube, but you guys should be able to see uh, the difference in the coloration of her teeth. Now, this may be a little bit too much because, like I said, you know, teeth are not completely white. So, um, you know, taking that in consideration, you may want to roll this back some, you know, adjust the opacity. But simply enough, we can still go in here. And I'm trying to maintain as much of the natural skin color, uh, teeth, texture, and color. So it doesn't look so artificial. It just looks like, you know, she has really good, you know, dental hygiene or something like that. But if you're enjoying life and enjoying good food, you're going to have some teeth discoloration in the real world. You know, we're not talking about the world of models and, uh, you know, things like that. So anyway, as we look at this here, we can see, you know, that's quite a bit. So we turn this one off and then back on. So what I would do here is I would probably just come in here and, well, you have two options. What you could do is you could do blend if, but if you're not familiar with that or you don't want to try something like that, you know, just roll the opacity down a little bit. So we could bring just a little bit of that natural color back in. So I would say somewhere around, you know, 55 or something like that is going to still give you a little bit of that natural color back into the teeth without it looking, you know, so artificial. So let's look at it at full size image. Let's just zoom out completely and see what we're getting. And even as we zoom in here a little bit, you know, we turn this off, you know, you can see the difference. Yeah, so that works, you know. So like I said, guys, I wanted this to be as easy for you guys to use and um, to give you the best possible results so that you didn't have to worry about, you know, color cast or anything like that. But if you are concerned about, you know, some type of color cast, you can also um, adjust the luminosity of the layers. You know, if there's like some kind of color cast that's coming in that you can't control, if you think that's what's happening, um, you can go ahead and I'll show you here. So let's zoom in here on her eyes and teeth. Now her eyes and teeth are relatively white, you know, so there isn't really a lot that we need to do here. But using this still as an example, we'll still go ahead and duplicate the layer. And we're assuming that we've already done all of our other stuff, you know, our frequency separation, our dodging and burning, any other, you know, um, adjustments that we want to do to the image. And now we're doing our final touch-up things. 
I will be also doing uh, later this week uh, an action for you guys for lipstick, you know, applying lipstick and stuff like that. So anyway, let's just zoom in here and look at her teeth. Now, in this situation, there's little small areas that may need to be adjusted, not the entire teeth. So this is a perfect example of how you can use this as kind of a, a blending or a fixing tool. So if we look here, in this area right here, there's a little discoloration. We could go in there and just kind of clean that up a little bit. But I'm going to do this entire, all of her teeth, just so you can see the difference. And then we can still come back in and blend these in a little bit better. So... Clean these up real quick. I'm not trying to be careful, guys. I'm just, you know, just painting them out. You know, obviously you want to spend a little bit more time and effort, you know, if you're doing this for a client or for your portfolio or something like that. And then once you um, have painted all of these in, then what you want to do is, I went over her lip a little bit right there, so we're just going to, Switch the brush, paint that lip color back in, switch back to white. And then what you want to do is option click on this layer. And now you can see the teeth, you know, where you paint it, you know, how much you paint it. And if you want to just go in and fill in more, you can right here because now you can really see what it is that you're working with and just go ahead and fill those areas in. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to be able to go in and, um, you know, clean up any uh, discolorations or anything like that. And that's what we're trying to look for here. So again, option click on that and should take you right back. So again, like I said, this seems a little bit too much to me. And you want to go into the gum line without getting the gum line itself. You don't want to, you know, desaturate the pinkness of the gums. So you may want to zoom in. This is one of those times you really may want to zoom in a little bit and get a little bit closer to the subject so you can see exactly what you're doing. So here, um, I would still roll the opacity back a little bit, maybe bring this down to about a, um, I don't know, maybe, eh, let's just do 55 again if we can do that. Okay, 57, that works. So if we compare that to the before and after, you do see a difference, you know, in her teeth, you know, the whiteness of the teeth. So if we come up to her, her eyes, an option would be, you have two options here. Well, you have multiple options. But one would be you could just, you know, um, just go in here and just really just paint in her eyes. And you could just use this same um, amount of clarity and color and everything in her eyes right here. And then, um, you know, go over to the other one. Same thing. Removing just a little bit of the, the yellow adding a little bit more blue into the eyes, just painting that in just to whiten them up a little bit. And then you're pretty much done there. So the other option would have been to just run the action a second time, or when you run the action the first time, since you know you want, may want to do the eyes and the teeth separately, just go ahead and duplicate the entire folder so that you'll have it more than once. But, you know, that, like I said, this is another option where you could just, you know, do both of them with the same action. But it's totally, totally up to you guys. It's all up to you what you want to do. So this is before and that's after. So, you know, in her case, you don't really see that much of a difference because, like I said, you know, she has pretty, you know, um, white teeth. And then again, the image might have been retouched already to some degree. So we don't know, you know, because these are coming from stock sites. So let's do one more. Um, Let's do this one. So all of these images will be, you know, for you guys to download. So you can download these images and take a look at them um, and then use them however you want to. So we're just going to go ahead and open this. We're not going to make any adjustments to the image itself. <clears throat> so we're going to just zoom in, getting closer here to the face. And as we zoom into her teeth, we do see a little discoloration there. So again, we're gonna do the same thing, Command J, we're gonna duplicate the layer. Again, we've already done our frequency separation before we got to this point. If you're gonna do some dodging and burning, maybe you're doing it at the end, the very end, or whatever it is, you know, so it all works. We're gonna go ahead again and click our um, eye whitening action. 
you know, everything's already selected. You may want to make your brush a little bit smaller. Make sure we got a soft round brush. Yeah, that's right. And then I want to make this brush a little bit smaller and I want to make sure that I'm keeping it soft. So then I'm just going to go in here and just start painting away. And, you know, get all the areas that we can see. And I showed you guys a little trick before by how to click on um, the mask itself with the option, holding down the option and clicking on it. And you can see the entire mask so you can see exactly where you paint it and what you paint it. So we're just going to go ahead and just get this last little bit. And then so <clears throat> I see an area that I missed, <clears throat> but this is a perfect example of what that will show us. So if we click here. As you can see right here, you can see the area that I missed. So we can just go ahead and go over that. Okay, that's good enough. All right, <clears throat> excuse me guys. So then we go up here and we look at our eyes. Uh, we just kind of like just dab it a little bit, just to lighten them up a touch. You know, they're kind of sunken in, so they wouldn't be too bright because you're not going to get a lot of light in there but you kind of get the idea. So if you want to lighten them up just a little bit, but then you also got to take into consideration the size of this image and the way the image is framed. So if we go all the way out, you know, that's a lot. <clears throat> so from what I'm looking at here, looking at this image, it almost looks like our teeth are glowing and you don't want that, you know, because then they're going to look neon. So again, you know, I would still go in here and adjust the opacity down to, like I said, about 50%. And you could start off at 50% before you even start painting, you know, if it you know, gives you a better indication of what the end result's going to look like. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, that works for this one. So let's see how much time we got. Yeah, we're good. So we're going to do one more. And let me find one more image. Now this is a client I did um, <clears throat> a couple of years ago. And I can see that there's a little bit of red in her eyes. So this will be a perfect example of using this, you know, to clean up the eyes. Now, she also has some veins in her eyes that need to be removed. So normally what I would do, uh, if it's going to be uh, working on that, I would go in first and I would remove all of these veins. So, you know, I'd create a duplicate layer or just an empty layer. And then you can go in <clears throat> within, you know, whichever tool you feel more comfortable with, you know, whether it's the clone stamp tool or the healing brush or the spot healing brush. And then, you know, you could clean up these little veins, but we're not going to do that for this. We're just going to go ahead and just run our action. And we're just going to start painting just to see what we get to make the brush a little bit smaller. And we're just going to start painting over her eyes, the whites of her eyes. And you can see already how much that's improving the redness from her eyes. Let's go over to the other one. Let's zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better what maybe what I'm seeing. Um, there's a lot of redness in her eye. So the objective here is to just be able to go in here really quickly and just remove that redness out and still try and maintain the natural color of the eyes. All right, so it looks like we got it. So let's zoom all the way back out and let's slowly zoom in just a little bit so we can see So again, like I said, that to me still looks like way too much. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that to maybe about 40. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Turn it off and then back on. You know, it's less, you know, of an effect on this specific image, but you still get the idea. You know, we clean the eyes up and we brought them back to a natural color. So she doesn't look so tired because her, her eyes are red or something like that, you know, and especially when you're dealing with headshots, you know, you got to remember, you know, especially with your corporate clients, 
you know, the headshot may be the first impression that they make um, with, a, you know, a new associate or a client or, you know, someone their company is going to be doing business with or something along those lines. So you want to make sure that you do your best job um, to try to make them look like the best version of themselves they can possibly be. So again, guys, you can go down to the description below and you can uh, just click on the download link and you can download all of these actions, uh, all the actions that I showed you, which is going to be the frequency separation, the dodge and burn, um, both versions of frequency separation, which is the 8-bit as well as the 16-bit. And then just install them the way I showed you in some of the previous videos. Uh, if your Photoshop is open, just double click on them and it should load right into Photoshop and you should be able to uh, just run those at your leisure. And then you can practice on those photos that I'm providing you just to you know, get a, a good idea of how they're going to work for you. All right, guys, so possibly, um, well, not possibly, most likely later this week, um, I will be uh, uploading, uh, going live, and I will do another video um, with something for lipstick. So, you know, we can start off with something as simple as repairing lipstick, all the way to you know changing the colors. So I'm going to create an action that will give you some advantages or um, simplify the process of uh, enhancing the lips. And then you know the next one will probably be something that we can use for um, like we do. Well, you can use your dodge and burn, you know, for um, darkening the eyebrows and the eyelashes and things like that. So you can use multiple layers of dodging and burning. And you can go in and do different uh, application um, opacities when it comes to one item or one part of the body you may want to be a little bit darker than other parts. You know, you can just adjust it and, you know, vary it however you need to. So I know you guys know what to do. You're all creatives. You're all artists. So I just want to do my part for the community to, um, you know, share my knowledge and provide something that may speed up your workflow. All right, guys, I'm going to bring this live to an end. You know, the video will be here forever for you guys to take a look at and share with others. If for some reason you found this video and you're not yet subscribed, please do so and ring that bell so that you'll be notified the next time I go live or post content. I will be doing a number of different uh, videos over the next couple of weeks, you know, with for actions and different things that I want to give to you guys so that it can, like I said, you know, speed up your workflow. But until then... Stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask, take care of your loved ones, and get out there and create something amazing. Now, if you're on Facebook and you have not yet joined our Facebook group, you know, follow me on Facebook. The links are probably all over my profile for our little, um, you know, learning photography and retouching uh, Facebook group. You can follow me on Instagram, um, here obviously on YouTube, Twitter, you know, most of the social media platforms you can find me. So if you have any questions that maybe somehow I didn't answer in the description of this video or, you know, um, the video itself, feel free to leave those comments down below. But if you want to talk to me directly, follow me on Instagram and just send me a message. I'll be more than happy to try and answer um, any of your questions that I can. But until then, my lovely people, I will catch you guys all in the next live. Stay safe. Peace. I'm out.